night demon, an evil creature stalks the Tanzanian islands of Pemba in the Indian Ocean. It can change shape, a bat sometimes, a human-like form at others. It prefers to come out at night, but some say they have seen it during the day. The Popobawa or bat wing in Swahili is indiscriminate in its targets. But in a common retelling, the spirit sexually assaults men. The Popobawa story is rather new, only dating back a few decades from a time of civil unrest following the assassination of the country's president. The popular thinking goes that after a Popobawa attack, victims must spread the word to others on Pemba. Otherwise, they will continue to be visited by the Popobawa. Reports of attack sent some locals into a panic. A few years ago, a series of nighttime sexual assaults were blamed on the Popobawa. Some men are staying awake or sleeping in groups outside their homes, the BBC reported in 2007. Others are smearing themselves with pig's oil, believing this repels attacks. A peasant farmer named Jaka Hamad claims he was attacked by the Popobawa in 1997. He says, I couldn't see it. I could only feel it. But some people in my house could see it. Those who have got the spirits in their heads could see it. Everybody was terrified. They were outside screaming, Who you? It means the Popobawa is here. I had this bad pain in my ribs where it crushed me. I don't believe in spirits, so maybe that's why it attacked me. Maybe it will attack anybody who doesn't believe. The women of your worst dreams. In Brazil, a tall skinny woman with long yellow fingernails and red eyes creeps along the rooftops and watches families inside of their homes. She watches them as they sit at the table for dinner. She watches them while they eat. La Pesadiera After the meal, when someone goes to sleep on a full stomach, La Pesadiera sneaks into their bedroom. Then she sits on their chest so they cannot move. The Pesadiera that has attacked them watches them as they begin to panic. The victim's eyes partly open but they are neither fully awake nor fully asleep. Helpless and trapped in a body that won't move. Sleep paralysis is a well-studied disorder. The worst thing is when you try to fight or call for help. A Redditor said in a conversation about what the experiences with it were like. Your voice doesn't work and your body will not respond. You just feel helpless. And among those who suffer from it across many cultures, there is one unsettling common experience. A sense that a male violent force is hovering over them in their immobile state. The earliest one I can remember is with my mother in the room and she is sitting on my bed. Her face morphs into a demon-like thing. A redditor shared in a thread on sleep paralysis. Or... A large dark figure, kind of human silhouette, emerging from the foot of my bed and staring down at me. Could her mom or the silhouette have been the Sadiera? They went on. I need to stop trying to remember these things. I'm getting chills. The Weeping Woman Her name was Maria. She lived in Mexico. She had long, dark hair and a covetous heart. The man she loved would not have her. So, she took her children in a fit of rage, took them down to the river and drowned them, one by one. When the man she loved spurned her again, she realized what she had done. She took herself to the water and threw herself in, to subject herself to the same fate as her children. But heaven would not have Maria, and she was condemned to wander the world in perpetual grief. She is La Yurona, the Wailing Woman. The people who have seen her said they saw her walking, soaking wet, wearing all white. And she can be heard crying out for the little ones she killed. Eh, Miss Hijos, she weeps, oh my children. 
Some say that she snatches other young children as she walks, mistaking them for their own young children she knew. Children along the Mexican border grow up with her story, which traces itself to stories about several different female spirits of the Aztec empire. My earliest memory of her is being in elementary school and being in the girls bathroom, says Terry Martinez, who grew up in Texas in the Rio Grande Valley. She and other young children would try to summon La Llorona in a bathroom mirror. The lights had to be out, Martinez said. The doors had to be closed. They'd splash water on the mirror and say her name three times. La Llorona, La Llorona, La Llorona. It was just seeing who could stand being in the dark room and seeing how long we could stand there waiting for her to come out of the sink, Martinez said. It usually ended with a bunch of little girls screaming and running out of the bathroom.